And we're back, going live on Donald Kent Art for a very, very special show today. Uh, my good friend Luke Mason, who has been hanging out on a bunch of my streams, just being a buddy, hanging out, talking while I do my art and stuff. Well, he is an artist as well. He's a visual artist, and he's going hardcore into learning more about visual art. And when you're a teacher and you find somebody who's really passionate as, as much as you are, then kabang, you know, that's a great chemistry. So in a sense, this is kind of like a, an art lesson for Luke, but it's just live for your entertainment and enrichment, enjoyment. There are a lot of visual artists in the White Art Collective, the White Art Collective sphere, if you will, and beyond that are you know passionate about drawing, painting, but perhaps could still use some refreshers and some skill sets. So what I'm going to do is a kind of a, a bigger overview of art, uh, how to draw specifically, because that's the foundation. You have to learn how to walk before you can run. So, you know, getting into color and painting is more advanced. Um, if you've got good, strong drawing foundations, then you're good to go. I want to say a quick hello to Nullis, who just joined us in the chat. And um, so, first of all, let's say hello to Luke. How are you today, sir? Hey, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. And thanks for, uh, you know, setting aside the time to spend with me on this. I, it's like a dream come true for me, actually. So this is great. Cool, cool. It's, it's a pleasure, honestly. Um, hold on a quick second here. So um, it looks like you got a new book there in your collection, though. What, what, what's that? Oh, I do. I uh, I was finally able to order your book. It's uh, Imperium Calling, the mm -hmm. Art and Poetry of Donald Kent. And it has all kinds of just amazing uh, material in there. And, uh, you know, from varying from, from kind of like uh, more traditional style artwork to comics artwork and everything in between and also poetry and i was amazed oh that's my that's our buddy actually yeah. uh full moon, uh, full moon ancestry. Ancestry. ancestry that was really that's cool correct. yeah dude this one is gnarly this <laughs> uh this this heart with the people and yeah man there's some there's some now is this a family member this that old fellow here uh i used to take care of that gentleman years ago he uh this is a long time ago he was a world war one veteran world whoa war I. yeah i it was obviously some years ago and um he lived down the street and we used to i used to bring him food and take kind of look after him, mow his lawn and stuff and i was uh learning fine art it was i mean that drawing is from when i was in college you know when i was like gosh i don't know 19 years old or something and i did that wow so, so uh I thought, my God, this guy is, you know, he's living history, World War One history. Wow. You know, and uh, plus just like the, the kind of the gnarly old man look like the, you know, the aged quality that he had. I just I was just so inspired by him. So I wanted to do uh, a portrait. And there you are. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. Oh, you have got so many uh, amazing pieces in here. Uh, now, this one here with the people going over the wall. That looks that, like a kind of a historic thing. I think I see a menorah in there. You do. And some I, flames. <laughs> all right. So a lot of people who know my show and know like my friends and my chat group, group, etc. Uh, that was a commission by a very close friend of mine in our community who, uh, CG, actually, he does his own show, The Warcast with Dirty D. And uh, that's a whole other crowd on, on Odyssey. Um, anyway, yeah, those guys are pretty cool very hardcore great great guys um anyway he commissioned this piece it's actually a duplicate of a, an italian painting from i don't know 19 uh, early 1900s and or maybe before that but anyway it's it's the um the roman sacking Jer jerusalem the temple and so i don't you know it's it's a historic event where the romans are sacking the temple and you know i think within the context of our movement that that image has a lot of meaning and it goes very well with my work and something yeah like the painting it seems like there's a lot going on here like if yeah. if you look where my pencil is pointing it it almost like the, the way those windows are 
uh, if those are windows, it almost looked like it's smiling. <laughs> no. It's like well, a <laughs> the, the painting itself is, is like almost four feet long, and so like you're just oh my it, gosh, so like really? It, yeah, it's quite shrunk down for the for the book, as you can see. Are these angels right here? Uh, it's just kind of smoke. Oh yeah, there are actually angels in that part of the image. Um, nice. There's, there's, yeah, yeah. So today, what we're going to talk about are different approaches, and I I generally feel there's two approaches to art. One is what I would mm -hmm. call the, the fine art approach. The other is the graphics art approach, which would be used for illustration, uh, comic books mural painting uh things of, of that nature so before we do that i'm going to kind of peruse a bunch of art books and just kind of warm us up a bit looking at you know some different work and getting a sense for for how things are, are done this is this is an example of what's called contour drawing which is just you know the outlines of things um there is this is interesting i'll show you a piece here where you can kind of see how something is broken down into almost geometric forms and then sort of filled in with tones and shadows etc so this is what you would call maybe the underdrawing and you can kind of see how graphic it is where there's like a line down the center of the face delineating where the eyes and the nose and the mouth are and that's kind of like the invisible ruler that an artist would use to to make everything go where it belongs and have the proper proportions and once you've got all of that information that's when you can kind of put on the shadows and the textures and the details and such so that this little example right here is is a huge reveal about like how how does one draw now everybody they want to start here they want to just go straight in and make <laughs> a masterpiece and like oh, i can draw it looks so easy but then nobody does that. Most people will kind of start out with, with kind of banging out a basic image of this kind. Uh, also a quick hello to uh, Yiz, the unifier. <laughs> uh, Discordant Dragons on Mondays. Uh, check out her channel as well. A good friend just showed up here. And so, you know, if you, if you get into magazines like this, and you can get that at your basic bookstore, you're going to find lots of goodies in there in terms of like how to draw. Um, I'm going to continue with uh, a, this right here is a magazine that I found and I, I've been using it like quite a lot. So I, I want to sort of just talk a bit and to help us conceptualize what is how do you draw? How do you build, you know, images of things and such? So um, the fine art approach is really one in which you're, you're eyeballing it. You're using your eye to see something and then literally training your hand to move in accordance with your with your eye. And so that's a whole that probably I should just do a whole show on that. But I want to break this down and see how the just, for example, the the uh what do you call it the uh the torso just for example is broken up into these extremely simple shapes so kind of like an sort of like what you have like an egg shape here or a box etc and then kind of having it on the spine there and so that you can have a because you can't just draw the form of it you have to be able to mold it and move it the the human figure is is pliable it, you know it's not this kind of stiff thing so once you get a sense of those sort of basic shapes like what you're seeing here then you can start building off of that um so the the human body is very complex you know and if you can just kind of start off with something sort of simple like so and then you see how like the the man on the right here is very flat and, and cartoony whereas you see the, yes. the female figure and and you see how these lines here to describe how like her shoulders and her hips are bent in a way that's very natural so yeah that's that's the sense of gesture in the human form so to be even more abstract about it you know take this figure here the seated figure and then think of it just as a like triangles you know and and mm -hmm. real basic shapes so that's that's how we conceptualize that's how we approach 
the figure. Now, there's obviously a lot of, uh, the, the, you know, the whole world is not just the human figure, but this is one of the essential aspects of, of you know, of, of Western art. Uh, breaking down the, this is a bit more complex, breaking down muscle groups and such. But let's say if we were to look at something simple like this, we're starting to see simple forms working together and then adding on muscle groups over the top of those simple forms. So if you can yeah. think of drawing a figure like a robot and that it would be very simple, geometric forms, and then adding these more complex muscle groups. So that's, that's the approach is to kind of layer it up. I, I think of drawing very much like sculpture, you know, I, I think of it in terms of like, what is the form? What is the underlying form, you know, get that and then build up and out from there. So if we see this real simple gestural form that shows the back and the skull, the spine and the skull, and then kind of rounding it out, then sort of adding in these uh, these forms, legs, arms, etc., and then going more towards the finished image. So this is the process, right? Nobody starts here, you know. Nobody starts at the end. They they you have to build it up like so. Um, and then also, like if you were to look at this phase specifically, this is what I call drawing through. So that that means that the the form is as if it's made of glass. And you just yeah, you can see the contour lines around the whole thing. Yeah, like if you look where the rib cage is, for example, you see that that oval in there. That yeah, th that sort of describes the form of the the back, the the sides, and the front all in a, a kind of a form. So when you do that, you're able to attach the the shoulders and the arms and the legs and the hips and you know everything will. It, it's easier to to see where things go and make it look proper, you know, make it look uh, sort of how it's supposed to look. So I'll, I'll look, show maybe a couple more examples, and then I'm going to demonstrate that um, with some drawing. Um, here's a neat thing, a neat kind of idea that the idea of like the, the human arm being like a chain, do you see the chain link there? And how... Oh, yeah. Yeah, my phone's kind of jiggling a little bit here, but... How no, that's that, very similar to something yeah. I recently copied. I might have, it might be from this book actually, like <laughs> that, that bicep right there. Yeah, yeah. So there's, you, you, you always sort of want to try to conceptualize things in those forms, in those ways, you know. Um, again, this bit right here is a little complex, but it's, uh, I just want to give the audience some things to look at, you know, and, you know, here, here's maybe a good example, just a second is to just have a the very simple notion of the you know the top part of the arm the forearm and how they connect and then create these these simple shapes and connect everything and then from there you can build up the anatomy on top of it so it's it's the architecture it's the underlying architecture um there's there's just a bazillion different books that you can get on this Th this is a, a good example here um th this is dealing a little more with with gesture and shadow there's a lot of older books that you can uh you can find on the topic there's just no shortage of books <laughs> on that but i feel like i should probably stop talking and start drawing get get into some actual samples of what i'm talking about so uh let's let's kick in here okay now with again with this uh let's try let's try um the basic oval to describe the chest okay so it looks mm -hmm. like an egg kind of right and we're going to do it a bit at the side so where the rib cage comes up there's this kind of it's it, imagine that this is a piece of clay and i just took a, a hunk out of it you know i just took i just like took a chunk out of the bottom like that you see what i'm doing here and yeah that, yeah that that basically acts as the rib cage now where where do the arms go if this is the the solar plexus here then your shoulders are going to attach here now i use um i'll use these uh spheres these kind of ball mm -hmm. type shapes because that that's the basic form of it 
I, I can draw yeah. through a little bit. You can, I, I hope you can see that. I, I could make it slightly darker a bit. Maybe I'll, I'll use darker lines for this and that should be easier to see. Um, and so after that, I will say, okay, the top of the, what do you say, the, where the neck is, we're going to make a, um, a small cylinder. You see this small cylinder here? Now I'll draw it over yes. here. Right. This cylinder, this is a cylinder, right? It's kind of like a little cup. Oh, yeah. You, you see that, that, that kind of little cup shape there? I'll zoom in a touch yep. for you. Is that so where the that, neck inserts? You nailed it. And so by first having that uh, that sort of egg shape here where the, the top of the torso is, now I know where the parts go, right? Okay. So yeah. the, the human head is its own kind of thing. It, it starts off with a, uh, a sphere. And then what I would call a, uh, what do you call it? Um, like a door wedge kind of shape, which is tri like a triangular shape, but in 3D. And I kind of add that on as the chin. I'll, uh, I'll mm. zoom in a little bit. Do you see how that looks like that? Yes. And so the it, it rests on top of that uh that cup like form now this looks really robotic and very simplistic this is really just i'm just building up from from the bottom so if i were to kind of shave off you know little bits of the side there if i were to add like a kind of a uh another door wedge right here where the nose would be uh maybe cut into the the circle a bit here i can create the uh where the eyebrows are and then i'll put an apple wedge over here and you're starting to see a head if come out of that shape you guys see it you know i think you can so yes that and i'm just again you don't try to start at the end start at the beginning so there's yes. that, sort of, that sort of ball shape that rests on top of the the cylinder um, oh, and you got like a, did you draw like a, a little, uh, little, what do you, an oval here kind of to delineate the front of the head from the side of the head there? So Is that what you this, got going on there? If, if you're, if you're talking about this right here, that's because the human head is not like a basketball. It's more mm -hmm. long-ish. So like, let's say if we, again, here, here's, here's a ball and I, I cut off the edges of that ball then I, I can start to draw the, the rest of the face. I'm actually going to grab, a, what do you call it, a little eraser here. And if I take those edges off, and I take this off, make it easier to understand, then now I've got the shape of the face. This is straight on, right? Okay, let's say, let's say here's the neck. Yeah, so, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, so... There you go. And that, you know, here's going to be your nose, your mouth, your, your eyes will be in there. You see how that works? Yes, so, that makes you know, sense. Your eraser is your best friend. <laughs> you yes. Know, you're you're going to be going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, you know. That's Don't mind my deformed head either. My head's a little deformed there. Well, that's it's very what, thin. <laughs> well, again, that's kind of what this whole experience is about is, is like feeling it out until you you it becomes sort of second nature you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so i'll uh, i'll kind of get back into this here we'll get the skull going we have that uh, kind of uh wedge type thing down here let's get back into the body now the the spine okay the spine is, is slightly kind of like an s curve right you have the you know that the nape of the neck the back the lower back and then the hips, uh, the, the sacral bone. There's a bit of a, a, an S shape there. So I'm going to do that here, and I'm kind of following the back of that uh, torso, or rather rib cage, and I'm going to curve it in, then give that little lower back curve, and then now I know where the hips are. Do you see what I'm doing? I'll zoom yes. in. Yes. You, you'll notice that sometimes I draw light and sometimes I draw dark. And that's, I go light because I'm feeling it out. You know what I'm saying? So yes. let's, let's make it simple. We don't want it to be this like crazy weird anatomy form. We're going to just turn it into 
something like this. It's it's kind of like if you were to take uh, maybe this shape here, like you think of like Fruit of the Loom underwear, you know. Oh, yeah. If you, if you had that, but then you made it 3D, it would look more like this. Do you see what I'm saying? So yes, there, sir. there's the two areas where the legs will connect to the hips, uh, the, the groin, obviously, the hips are here. And then the clearly the gut isn't just going to be empty like that, right? But now that we know, according to the spine, where these where everything belongs, then we can just, you know, tie it together like so. You see what I'm saying? So yes. I'll zoom in a little one more time there, and you can see how the the stomach area connects the top of the torso to the bottom. So from there, um, let's let's say the legs are going to be long uh what do you call them uh cylinders okay and the the top part of your leg is pretty long it's like about as long as your say from your waist to your your shoulders if you were to like look in the mirror and you know and men and women are different women actually have longer legs and shorter torsos so that's a different kind of anatomy but generally speaking, I made this guy a little long, like his torso is probably a little too long. I could bring this up, actually. See, there you go. Your eraser is your, your best friend, you see? And, <laughs> like, yeah. don't, don't ever, like, worry about it. Like, just think, like, okay, <clears throat> that's not right. Make an adjustment. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's always, it's, this is what drawing is. It's sketching, erasing, thinking it through, figuring it out. You know, when I do my show, I really just do inking because I, I don't want people to have to watch me, <laughs> you know, going through the the struggling process of trying to figure out, well, where does that go? And where does that go? You know, it's a lot of thinking involved. So here we go with these uh, thighs. And I'm um, kind of, you know, stretching it out a little bit to give him a more animated look. Maybe I'll, I'll take this backbone off so I can put an arm in there, you know, just make some space. Um, now, how long would the, 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 not the forearm, the, the bicep be like, well, let's, let's, you know, I mean, everyone has some basic sense of anatomy. Let's say it's going to be. Yeah. Dangerous. Would it be like, so like if you like one and a half heads or something, Put your down, put your, well, that's the whole body. Put your arm down to the side of your body and notice that your elbow is right about where your small rib is. It's right at the end of the rib cage. Yeah. So I, I have his arm kind of popping out. A uh, quick hello to Handsome Horse. Wow. It's so cool to have you here, buddy. Yeah. Oh, cool. Good to see you, dude. That is a good <laughs> friend right there. That is an old friend right there. God bless him, man. Oh, yeah. So, now, where the elbow is, we're going to use another uh, sphere because we, now it, you know, the elbow is not like the shoulder where you can move, you know, all over. The elbow just kind of goes back and forth. But we're still using it to demonstrate a, a joint where, where movement occurs. So we're going to go over to mm -hmm. the other side. We're going to pop in another uh, bicep. We're going to throw in, and you can think of it again like a robot, you know, like. They, what what kind of joints would a robot have maybe right so we're going to throw those in there and then just a quick thing on on cylinders here for the arms and the legs you're going to have different variety of cylinders that start off kind of wide on one end and thin on the next end you know hmm. if it's if it's yeah so oh yeah 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 tapered you, you kind of see tapered that's a really good way to yes. put it so so Let's do this. The forearm has got a little bit of a, you know, sort of wider on one end and then a little bit uh, tapered towards the bottom. Um, we're going to do the same thing over here, but I'm going to make it kind of move in a different direction. So we can start piecing this together. I'm going to take that backbone out just so that people can kind of see a bit more how how this is going to look maybe i'll touch up that chin a little bit okay and then here's our guy so far our, our mannequin if you will um we can see how everything's kind of coming together 
and then yeah. Now, yeah, I think we'll do the legs now. I don't think I the, this 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 paper is maybe not big enough, or I I drew too big anyway. And don't know if I'm going to get the whole figure on on here, but I'll uh, I'll try. So once again, just uh, that circular joint, um, a long cylinder. I'll, I'll do that over here, and you know. Don't worry about it looking perfectly normal or human or something or other. We're just doing the underdrawing. Just keep remember it's an underdrawing. It's the architecture architecture on, on which you, you, you dress the mannequin. So hands and feet, I would say you can use this. Uh, I, I call it a door wedge. It's basically a triangle that is 3D. So do you see that? that form yeah. on the top there i just I yes think, you know, door wedge i think is a good or a, or a slice of pie i mean i don't know how you want to call it but like i always say door wedge you know now this guy's nose is a smaller door wedge if you look at it his oh yeah is, is sort of a fat door wedge it's essentially a try a 3d triangle so if there's a name for a 3d triangle so for example you know uh, a circle is a th or uh, yeah uh, a sphere is a circle in 3D. Uh, 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 a cube is a square in 3D. So what is a triangle in 3D? What's that called? I mean, you, it, to some extent... Oh, like a pyramid? A, a, well, pyramids have different... That's kind of its own shape, though, ain't it? Well, there's cones in pyramids. Now, so, for example, you, you know, like an ice cream cone or whatever, you see that. But something to that effect. Now, pyramids, a lot of times... We'll say like we'll have like say four sides, but all of the points will go to one uh, point at the top, kind of. So it's not really quite the same. Anyway, that's a crappy image. So what I'm trying to say here is let's look at the hands as a kind of again that that sort of uh, something like that that door wedge quality uh, or shape form. <laughs> um, I, again, I'm going to add in little circles for the wrists here. I kind of go like so, and then like so. And this will make sense later. Now, when the hand is is in a fist form, you can kind of see, for example, uh, here's the triangle. You see that the triangle as I'm drawing it over, over here. Now, my, my thumb kind of comes out a little bit, but you should be able to see that triangle minus the... the, the yes. Thumb. All right, well, that's just a, something we're going to add later. But the general shape is a triangle, right? So up yeah, here, absolutely. As, as you saw up here, this is something like a foot. You know what I'm saying? So we're just mm -hmm. going to put, we know where the ankle is, and we can get a sense of scale, right? How big should that foot be? Now, if I were drawing the Hulk, his feet would be like four times the size of a human foot. You know, like he's got a very strange anatomy. If I'm Oh, I like how you did that. What's that? Oh, I just, I the have foot? struggled with feet. Well, feet and hands are a big problem for most people. Yeah. Okay. And so I just that... gave him like such a small foot. He's like, he's been in a Chinese, Chinese foot binding oh, God. torture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. And now this this foot's kind of going off the edge of the page, so I can't unfortunately I can't really like draw it properly, but it would say it would look more let's try to do this. It would look more the kind of head on a bit. It might might you might have a little bit of an edge to it, but it, it's it's sort of mm -hmm. a little more a little more head on. So there's your mannequin okay so then once you're yeah uh, once you're comfortable with these things and we can break things down we will break things down like that's what these books are for so if we get into you know like here's the, the basics of drawing a face you know where things go how to draw eyeballs ears noses you know i mean th this this stuff gets pretty complex uh and then from different yeah. angles hair is really hard to illustrate you know, hair. Has now I have a question. Yeah. This drawing by construction method is this considered more of like a fine art approach or more of like a graphic art approach? Graphic art. That is a graphic ah. art approach. Yes, for sure. And I can switch over. I'm going to finish this and then I'll switch over and do a little fine art demonstration. Okay. 
so that way yeah, yeah. more a bit more kind of like i don't know just give you like a total sense of things uh the anatomy of the neck and i mean again these books are, are really great references uh hands again are, are quite hard for people to draw so you know there's there's just a lot of of, of content here <laughs> anyway so we'll move on here now once i've got my guy my, my sort of mannequin that's where i'm gonna like i say dress the mannequin so granted i haven't drawn everything like you know let's say his his ears um but all of it has to be thought of in in these kind of 3d forms okay so mm -hmm. um let's see yeah let me make a take a quick uh comment here we've got yes says they taught us this for figure drawing and you can also use the building block method of drawing too for planning out uh, sculptures and paintings too yeah this is well said this you know all of this stuff connects i'm taking like a four-year college degree and putting it in like a, a half hour drawing session so you know again it's just you, you have to kind of take it for what it is but so from here you're, you're going to notice that another important aspect of this is overlapping so one of the ways in which we show space is mm -hmm. that something is in front of another thing you know this is what happens in reality yes right? now when i when i draw the that egg shape the rib cage you know i draw yep. through it's again it's he's sort of invisible or made of glass or something so now's the time when i'm going to go in and i'm going to erase I'm going mm -hmm. to erase certain lines that don't belong there he's not invisible right so and that's why i was drawing yeah. those lines lightly because i know yeah. that later i'm going to erase them right so now here you can see how the the bicep overlaps the 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 back of the ribs here right i'll zoom in just a bit more and and that yes. creates a sense of space we know that the arm is in front of the rib cage now you know with the case with the anatomy of the chest you have this kind of uh i guess the pectorals here you know you can get into you can start adding musculature to it you know kind of uh clothing the the mannequin with muscles if you will um i suppose we could just do straight anatomy i was actually thinking of putting some clothes on this guy uh clothes have like they wrinkle in a certain way that's a whole other topic but before we do any of that we have to erase things that don't belong we get rid of all these weird uh joints and things those were just there earlier to help us to know mm -hmm. where does where does stuff go how do i build this mannequin okay so i'm gonna kind of get in there and you know use logic use your sense of just basic common sense that in order for this person to look like a person i've got to erase these these weird lines with it make him look invisible he's not a ghost you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. get in there but we try to retain uh whatever the general forms are okay uh once again with overlapping we see here how the let's say the pectoral muscle and the rib cage overlap the arm there. So that gives us a little bit of a sense of space. Um, here we've, you know, we've got, uh, we can erase these uh, hip lines, if you will. We can erase the, some of the knee. It's good to keep some of it there because it, you'll, you'll see later the knees are kind of, I don't know, bony, I guess. So sometimes yeah. it's nice to have a little reference for that. And mm. I'm also My. kind of, uh, what's the word? Like touching up areas, like that that knee needed to protrude a bit more. I had to make it a little bit sharper on that edge right there. I had to you know, add something to it. So this is the fine tuning stage here. I'm fine tuning, making sure that Mr. Anatomy is is roughly correct, like correct enough. And all I'm doing all of this just out of my mind. Like I'm not looking at any references or what have you. If I, I might stop and look at it and say, he's a bit lanky, but you know, maybe the character calls for that. Like if you look at Wolverine versus 
Batman or, or, you know, or, or Wonder Woman versus Kitty Pride. I don't know if you know these characters, but they have different anatomies. You know, Wolverine is like a yeah. short, shorter, muscular guy. He's not a tall guy. He's short, you know. Um, there's just various qualities to the anatomy that it's going to affect like the joker's real skinny and uh you know this this types of things so so with uh i might look at this and say oh man that arm is just way too long you know i got a little zealous there i'm gonna have to tighten that up maybe i can even change the direction of his, his hand here a little bit kind of curve it in more so with this dude here i think i'm just going to give him a, your basic your basic you know, work attire, you know, put, put the, uh, kind of the, you know, the pants in here, something like a, kind of like a belt thing going on here with, you know, da da da. And a lot of times it's just, you know, everybody knows what a fucking belt looks like. So everyone's part of my language, you know what I mean? But the thing is you draw it so that it curves around the waist. You see the clothing yeah. is going to, it's going to hang on the person in such a way that shows there's an, there's anatomy underneath it. You see? Um, mm -hmm. So let's say we'll give this guy kind of a dress shirt here. It's not going to be super skin tight, right? There'll be maybe a little, a little uh bagginess in here where the where wherever the bends are even if you kind of see that the bends in in my hand here it crumples up like so and it pinches in that kind of way so anywhere oh yeah there, yeah the, it's like a bunch of v's that kind of come together like this sort of v shapes that come in here and that again is is, is very simplified how i'm talking about it um i'm gonna I'll go in and maybe tuck his shirt in here. I have a little little bit there, something right here. Maybe this shoulder's a little too roundish. Maybe I'll I'll kind of uh, do something like that to it. I'm going to zoom in a bit for people to see what I'm doing here. So I'm I'm clothing him. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah, that. yeah. As such, I'm going to get rid of a lot of this anatomy. I'm going to start putting yeah. folds in like where, where the, the shirt is tucked into the pants. It's going to kind of ruffle a bit, right? Like, so, um, yeah. I, I can kind of, you know, use, the, let's say the, I don't know what, where you button your shirt, that's going to follow the form of his torso. Um, what do, what does the, the collar look like? Well, they're kind of like these, uh, triangular shapes. You can sort of see like that. Um, maybe I'll throw a little shadow in there just to help give it some form. You see what I'm doing here? So yeah. uh, I'll pop in there and oh, wow, yeah. closer look at it. Um, I think these pectoral muscles are a bit too much. I'm going to like tone those down a bit. It might, I might put a pocket in here or something like that. And this guy's got a pocket protector. He's a nerd. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah uh, man wing it productions is here hey buddy uh it's it's kind of like it's just a, a one-shot art lesson just going over you know some basic uh things about how to draw the the fundamental aspects of how to draw now just because you you see it once though it doesn't mean like oh bang I'm i'm perfect i can do this perfect every single time now no it's it's always you're, you're sort of sculpting you know, I think of drawing as like 2D sculpting, um, you know, and there's a lot of a lot of er erasing. You have to kind of go back and forth in and out. My channel's here. Oh, Donnie boy, the crayons, the pens are calling. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, it's a good Irish thing there. There's, so, uh, again, wherever wherever the, the anatomy bends, there's going to be folding in, in the bending. So where the hips are. You know, you might have your pockets, but there, there's going to be kind of a little bit of a bending of the fabric in there. Okay. Now, down, yeah. down here by the end, by the, uh, the pant legs, again, he's not wearing super, super tight pants. He's not, I don't know, millennial or Gen X or what are they? Who, who, who wears the tight, tight pants these days? The, the hipsters. It's going to kind of hang off his leg a little bit. And then scoop around like so, and then maybe put a little, so a couple folds in there, and then I'm going to erase the leg, 
You see what I'm doing? So yeah, now, yeah. Now that we look at the pants, it looks like a, like a Sears catalog. You know, oh, get your summer pants. But um, it, it's much more natural, much, much more natural. Same thing with the other leg here. Um, the Let's say where the, the knee is. The pant leg is going to kind of fall forward a little bit. It's it's a little bit baggy. So we're going to have it fall forward like that. We've got, again, wherever the legs and elbows and such, they bend, you're going to have some of that uh, folding of the clothes in there, like so. Now, one thing I like to do with pants is I, I like to draw the seam in there because it's just one more visual device. to. Oh, yeah. Of, it's like a contour line. Yeah, it, it, it convinces the eye that like that's a guy wearing pants, you know, and when you're looking at art, you're not thinking like that. But subconsciously, like if it's wrong, you'll freaking notice it. You know, you'll be like, that looks weird. That doesn't look like he's wearing pants, you know, but when you can use devices like that, it kind of helps. You know what I'm saying? So I might find yeah. where the, the contour lines are and I'll kind of pop that in, add a little something. So that's super super basic uh very 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 simple very basic um let's switch over to something that's more fine art related in terms of uh process okay yeah yeah a darker pencil because um, the, mm. the show's not going to go on for 10 hours it's just uh just trying to bang out some some basic uh basic concepts here um before we do that let's take a tiny tiny break to look at some really, really amazing art, uh, the art of Alex Ross. Here's a guy that is a, you know, his, his fine art skills are top notch. He can draw and paint uh, in a, like a photorealistic way. Yeah. Let me try to find like some examples here. Uh, beautiful. Uh, he, his mission essentially is to make superheroes as real as possible uh that's kind of what he's known for he's one of the top paid artists of uh in the comics industry um one of the uh the spider-man movies the beginning of the movie was just like his his artwork um you can see his his sense of anatomy is freaking perfect like it's super perfect but it's more than that he he can do uh you know his lighting is exquisite. Uh, his uh, architecture is, is, is like spot on. He's a monster. Like he's an absolute beast. Is just not, look at just the drama of this piece right here. It's super simple. It's very simple, but it's extremely iconic. And the fact that it looks more realistic changes things. It's not that kind of cartoony Superman. It's not the overblown hyper masculinized it's humanistic and as such we relate to it differently that's the the cartoony stuff's fine i like that stuff it's fine but it's just taking a moment to look at the way he's using the contrast of the shadows and like, yeah that's incredible uh, and just the composition i was floating there i was gazing at you the, the 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 masculine the masculinity of it it's really just quite beautiful um, then you might look at, say, something like this piece here. It's the, the uh, what do you call it? The um, perspective being extreme here. Um, this yeah, is the, I love stuff like that. It just jumps off the page. Oh, it's just magnificent. Yeah. So, like, I could, let's say, let's, let's try something interesting here. Give me a second. Grab a sheet of paper. So, if I were to take this, uh, I, I'll see how, if I can handle this with, two hands and somehow or other uh, i don't know if i'm going to be able to do this uh let's see what i want to do is try to replicate this okay i i just because if i had four hands i'd be able to do it <laughs> better <laughs> but uh, i'm going to sort of kind of try to replicate this and and see if i can do it so the first thing i'm going to do is um i'm going to draw his uh what do you call it his torso you know and try to get the torso so i'm looking at this image but that's what I'm drawing. It's just a, a, a blob here, you see? So yeah. I'm, gonna decide, I'm gonna start throwing on his shoulders and I'll, I'll put his head in there too. And now compare it. 
you see if I'm, I'm doing something simple like this and then compare it to that shape. So I'm using my eye to, to do this, right? Um, yeah. It looks like you're kind of constructing it a little bit too. I'm, I'm reconstructing it. So I'm going to go back oh, okay, and, yeah. again, and then I, I'm going to notice that the cylinders and what have you are very much behind each other, you know, because that's what creates that uh, perspective, that extreme perspective. Uh, give me a second here and I will show you some more. So now I've got, I've got this based on that. Do you see how that's working? It's it's very messy. It's very kind of sketchy, but as oh, no, that I, makes perfect sense. Yeah, as I do the piece. So now you're not going to see much of his stomach, right? Because he's 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 facing kind of out at you. He's coming towards you, right? So that's yeah. that's quite. Uh, but I'll draw through this character a bit, and I'll find my way to the uh, hips, and then kind of put in the uh, using the method i was just talking about kind of add in these different areas here and then he's got his the feet as that kind of wedge thing i talked about uh the top of his head uh the the nose uh the, the bit of the hairline here i'm gonna start bringing this back so this you see what i'm doing here look at that and then look at that so I'm re based on what I'm looking at. I'm re. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll zoom in a little bit if I can. It just it's not working that well with my camera the way it is. Anyway, so these are things that you do. You know, as an artist, is that you look at other people's work, and you say, you know, how can I? What can I get from that? How can I duplicate that? Now this is fun. This is the more old style cartoony look that he's got going on there. You know, with that ridiculous jawline <laughs> oh yeah 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 i love that exaggerated style yeah. the simplified yeah. yeah yeah anyway i just thought it might be kind of neat to take a minute to look at um alex ross's work and see just how beautiful it is um how he uses fine art techniques to create uh superheroes and, and it's just a really wonderful world now this is just the more of contour line basic uh just, you know without all the shading and such a uh, really strong he just seems that. like he just has like no limitation like he could literally draw anything and i'm gonna say yes <laughs> i'm gonna say yes to that so let's get into some fine arts um so here we go so like uh one of the the basic skill sets that you do if you go you know, you go to college and you want to be uh, a fine art major is they'll have you do what's called blind contour drawing. So mm -hmm. I might, I might uh, like uh, across my room, there's a, there's a cup with some pens and a, uh, scissors in it. So I'm not looking at my paper. I'm not going to look at my paper, but I will mm -hmm. use my eye and very, very slowly, I'm going to draw faster because this is a, this is a YouTube and, I'm going to kind of, you know, imagine where that is. I'm going to use my, essentially my pencil is moving where my eye is moving. My eye is, and I'm not supposed to lift my pencil off the paper. My eye is, is following the contour of the image. And my pencil is following my eye. Does that make sense? Yeah. So again, there's pens inside the, the cup. You know, there uh, over here is a pair of scissors with these, you know, where you put your fingers through, you know, and then it comes down. And so now I'm, now I'm looking at my paper and I'm saying like, wow, that looks like shit, you know, but the point is not the end result. The point is that I gained eye hand coordination skill. Do you understand? Yeah, you totally. So all this is going to go in the garbage. You're going to chuck it later. It, this isn't for putting in a frame. So throw out the mentality that I have to make it look this one. It's got to be pretty. That's shut up. You know, that's not what it is. <laughs> that's not what it fucking is. So I'm going to look at this woman's face and I'm going to hold this outside of the camera to my left. 
I am not mm. looking at my paper. I can't see my hand. Okay. And my eyes, and again, I'm going to do this kind of fast. But um, you're not supposed to go this fast. But I, the pencil is moving exactly with my eye. And I'm, again, you're not supposed to lift your pencil off the paper. But this, this paper is like kind of slippy and slidey. And I just can't, you know, whatever. So let's go back. I'll start at the top. Um, let's see. Her hair is kind of like so... I kind of da, da, da. and I, I right around here i believe is where her eye is um i'm gonna kind of go like so i believe her eyebrow is here i'm gonna i think her nose comes down about here hopefully the paper's not sliding around and and but it, like again it doesn't even matter i'm actually even going to draw the shadow next to her nose so you don't just draw the contour of things, you draw the contours of shadows and lights. And it I know from your end, it, it probably looks weird, but on my end, this is very challenging to do. You know, and I'm- I Oh yeah, I can actually see though, like the, I can see the basic form. So it's let's, not like- Let's zoom in on this and just see, because again, this is just a quick sample. Now, it's blind contour drawing. I'm blind. I cannot see my paper. But did, yeah. my pen, did my pencil obey my hand? Or rather, my eye. So did my hand obey my eye? And it looks not too bad. So that's called eye-hand coordination. Okay? So after yeah. do a thousand hours of that, <laughs> <laughs> and, then you, and then you're ready to be an artist. Okay? That's called Yes. That. That's called your sit-ups and push-ups right there. You see, like hell yeah, man! All those bodybuilders and those sports stars, you know. Do you recommend doing things that are like simpler shapes at first? Of course, that's kind of what I was doing. That's what I was doing with the cup. You know, it's just like cylinders and and simple, simple things before you get it. So, like, if I'm to hold my hand out now, here's here's the next phase. Okay, that's like I said, yeah, that's bl blind contour. So now okay. we're going to do we're going to do semi blind. Okay, so semi blind contour is when I my eye is going to you know move along the contour. I might even go into the into the shadows and the widgets and the nuggets and whatever I got in here. And then while my eye is doing that, I'll look at my hand and then I'll look at the paper and I'll look at my hand and I'll look at the paper and I'll look at my hand and, I'll at my hand and, I'll, and I'm going to get in. And when I was a teacher. I would walk around the room and I would watch people. I'd watch their eyes. I would not look at their drawing. I would look at their eyes. And if they were just looking at their drawing or rather at the paper and do 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 la 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 la. No, shut up. Now get out of my classroom. You're just drawing a hand from your memory. You're not looking. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, and I would I would like, you know, you know, hit him over the head with a stick. No, I never did that. Uh, but you get the idea. <laughs> like, ah, they start over or whatever. Oh, you caught me, you know, because the tendency is, you know, you don't want to look at it. You you think I know what a hand looks like, so I'm just going to draw a hand. No, that's not that's for babies. Do your sit ups and push ups. So I'm going to I'm going to do this here. I, I'm just for whatever reason, I'll keep my hand to the side a little bit. And here I go. So I'm gonna, I'm okay. I'll, I'll tell you. So like, I'm, I'm looking at my thumb, looking at my paper. I'm looking at my thumb, looking at my paper. I go, I go back and forth. This is how frequently I'm going back and forth. And by so doing, I now have more control over and back and forth, back and forth. I have more control over the drawing because it's not like that face that was all wonky and weird and, and no, you know, the anatomy was floating all over the page. Now this time I can make the hand look like a hand because I'm doing, my eye is going back and forth and back and forth. And so I, I follow, follow back and forth right about here. So I look at the paper so that I can adjust for this, the scale of things the anatomy of things like, okay, the middle finger is longer than the, uh, the first finger and the, the ring finger is actually a little smaller than the first finger. And then the pinky finger stops right around there. So, okay, I'm going to come down and da, da, da. now that 
even though it's 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 sort of sketchy it's the anatomy is much more realistic to my hand you see what i'm saying you look at that, yeah. you look at my hand and you say like oh that's actually that's actually pretty close right whereas yep. i threw the where's that magazine um whereas this woman's face versus my my blind contour drawing is not because i didn't have the benefit of looking back and forth are mm -hmm. we on the same page okay Whoosh. so once you get that going you are in a good place you are building real real skills you know all right so let's look at another thing there's something is this gonna help uh with like speed too with like being able to you know like pump out drawings faster because of like increased hand-eye coordination um well if you're drawing for comics and you have a deadline or something of that nature like you'd have to actually be working uh, for a real company that wanted you know things on time and, and such mm -hmm. um i don't you're you're drawing from your mind you're drawing from your imagination oh right? yeah yeah so you can just so this is different this is like better for like working from a reference or something right right so once again it's 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 sorry it's fine art it's drawing from life is when you see oh, okay you see a person you know and you're drawing a portrait or you're drawing something in nature a landscape um this garbage um then you know you're you're actually literally painting the thing that you see you know so that it looks uh. exactly like yeah so that it looks like the thing that you see you know what i'm saying you know mm -hmm. um so it's it's this is before photography you know you have to understand like this tradition oh from, you know, so there's no what go ahead that explains something because when i uh enrolled in my college class well i haven't enrolled but i've dis decided what major and it's like an art ed major and i was uh looking at the classes and it didn't mention anything about perspective you know these drawing classes it just says yeah. like life drawing and it doesn't say anything about perspective or right. uh, line or okay. value or anything life, like that. Listen to me. Life drawing is drawing the nude model. That's exactly what it is. So you you it's not about architecture. It's not about graphics. It's not about cubes and and you know blah blah blah. It's it's about it's the tradition, the Western tradition, of drawing a, a live model. So that's literally what life drawing is so um and you know that this graphic stuff that i'm teaching you is uh you know that's more for comics this uh what do you call this uh like blind and semi-blind is prerequisite for life drawing you don't go straight into life drawing you got to learn oh, to okay. draw you have to learn to draw this is learning to draw the techniques of it and then from there you're allowed into a you know the higher level which is the nude and then so like i'll just kind of give you an example of how i i want to try to show you actual you know artwork that kind of gives a better sense of it hold give, just give me a minute here for that i'm sorry it's uh little... so in the fine art tradition i'm is there a lot less like use of imagination not really it's it's more interpretation okay i would you see what i'm saying so like um you can go into a life drawing class and you can see you know there's 20 different uh, images of the same model but they all look different you know because each artist has their own style or limitation or interpretation you know you you select mm -hmm. certain things so i want to focus on this i'm going to ignore that um i'm going to use these techniques i'm going to render it in this way blah 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 you know but like let's say if like here we're seeing some kind of fine art uh life drawing here but without understanding this kind of underdrawing you're gonna have a hard time doing doing the, the the model you see what i'm saying so yeah uh, so do, do, let me what i i want to do is have something to draw and this is again 
you know, graphic arts, you're drawing from your imagination. You you will draw from uh, reference. Like let's say I want it. Yeah, I want it. Okay, you know, this is what the Batmobile looks like. I got to have a reference, so I'm gonna draw that. Whatever. But yeah, you know, what I'm trying to do here is find, say, like a nice, uh, without like a squinty face, but like a a picture of a woman, for example. And then, um, <laughs> so this is good for comics because you you know people are expressing. Oh yeah, yeah. So this is like a great reference for you know when someone's just trying to be expressive, for example. Um, so, I think I know that girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's a phenotype. It's a phenotype. Um, my my studio's not set up. See the way the camera and its table, and I I just don't really have the space to kind of do all this. So I'm just going to kind of pretend. I just sort sort of just give you a, an example of how these things work. So let's say let's say you had a, a kind of a stage on which you had a model that was posing or something, you know. And let's say she was maybe seated in, in a certain way. So I'm going to hear what I'm doing is the kind of the gesture of it. Do you see how, how this looks here? Maybe I'll, I'll go like that. And maybe her arm will be resting across her leg. And maybe her, her head will be tilted a bit. So do you, do you, do you see that that's the, that's called gesture drawing what I just did. Yeah. Yeah. Gesture. It almost reminds me of like a quick sketch kind of a thing. That's quite what it is. So I'm, you know, the, the movements very fluid, it's gestural. So it's gesture drawing. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to, all I'm trying to do is capture the, the movement of it. You know, where, where does this, what's the flow of it? What is the, the sense of it is what's the impression of it then then from there i can start breaking into some details right so i'm gonna kind of maybe put my glasses on that could help i'm gonna start kind of punching out um some aspects of of how this is gonna look you know maybe i'll get some general anatomy in here uh da, da, da. maybe this is you know, her arm is going to be kind of leaning over that leg, which, which leg is the side leg. And so her hand will be draping down sort of like so. And then I'm going to jump over to the leg here and I'll kind of flow right into the ankle and the foot. Now I'm going to darken in that line. Do you see how darkened that in? Now this yeah, is yeah. The, the, the way the wrist inter interfaces with the knee is a very beautiful, delicate kind of thing. And I'll kind of bring down that leg and then the other side of the leg, give a little curve to her back, a little femininity. Um, her shoulder's gonna be a little high right here. Maybe she could even have her chin on her shoulder. That might actually make it more attractive. So I'm kind of zooming around in here. Uh, the neck will sort of protrude here. That's where these collarbones jump out pop in the, the pectoral here the the arm is going to be bent slightly backwards a little bit just because of the pressure that she's putting on her arm and then the hand will be kind of flat stretched out a bit here maybe the hair will be kind of draped over behind her here and i would throw some shadows in right about now just to kind of help that out um you know you, you can you see how it's coming alive do you see how mm -hmm. it's coming alive? Do you see what I'm talking about? So yep. this is this is a fine art approach. Now it's not a hundred percent different from what I was doing with uh, Mannequin Man, you know, with Robot Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that that was more, you know, chunks of shapes that that fit together like a puzzle. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's, yep. it's it's way more mechanical. You see that kind of that kind of drawing. I don't get that right off there. It's kind of ugly. Um, so they're just different mental approaches, but you can overlap um, these different approaches. Um, we're gonna kind of get in here a bit. Let's do get some under boob going on there. Uh, <laughs> I, need to, I need to bring bring that in a bit. Uh, where the what do you call it the uh, where the rib cage meets the the stomach, 
there's that little yep. L, that little kind of L shape there. Um, let's see, how big do I want her thighs? Maybe kind of a kind of little, I'm gonna make a little on the big side. And then, yeah, so I know that's what I'm talking about. Anyway, so. I'm 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 sculpting. Do you see how I'm sculpting this drawing? You see what I mean? That's yeah. Why, that's why I, I I think of this like sculpting on paper. Um. Dee -dee -dee. So uh, let's see. If her hip is here, then where's the other hip? It's got. It's you know. Remember how we talked about drawing through? Like if if she yeah, had yeah. no legs at all, the other hip would be there. So I'm, I'm going to erase that. But you see how mm -hmm. the, the other the other hip is is kind of behind that uh, the leg in the foreground. So if yeah. that's where that is, then this is kind of sort of where that other leg is going to come out of, and therefore mm -hmm. the knee will be here. Therefore, and I'm going to draw. You know, I'm kind of working through that ankle. I'm going to kind of keep going. The what do you call it? The calf, and the leg is going to sort of shoot off the end there. This little platform that she's <laughs> on um welcome to art school so and you put the happy clouds in no uh <laughs> gotta, get, gotta get a bob ross wig or something yeah like man anyway those uh, happy clouds like those thick thighs man oh, <laughs> PG, i've never having you on this show again no, no. Um, so i'm gonna go back in and get rid of these things or right? i'm gonna start cleaning them up a bit okay yeah and it's it's okay to leave in fine art it's actually a benefit to leave your gesture drawing in the piece now i personally am not one of these like super finicky persnickety people where it, it has to be perfect like a photograph i'm like then just take a fucking photograph like you jerk it's a drawing you see what yes I mean? like, let it be a damn drawing let the pencil lines show let the mistake show let it live it's a living breathing work of art you don't mm -hmm. if, if you're if you're alex ross and you're mr perfect fine that you can do that i'm not criticizing it but i really lean into like that's the difference between fine art and illustration illustration is generally not kind of scratchy and sketchy and interpretive you know, it's more like well, this is Superman, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, it seems like illustration, though. They're not trying to get it in one pass. They're, like, using multiple layers. Well, that that's as far as the methodology of, of building the image, that, that's happening, correct? Um, so uh, so I guess my point here is that, let's say, where is, uh, hold on a sec. Let's get back to this guy. So that's graphic. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, once again, like when people watch my uh, my my art stream, I'll take this and then I'll I'll get, you know, my my inking utility here. And then I'll start literally banging out like the exact lines of things. And, and I'm graphically representing it. Of course, this damn pen is dry. I'm going to find a better one. Um, here. so it's very very clear like what is what you know and, and i still do have a little room for some interpretive things here maybe i can make the line thin here and thick there i can kind of be a little sketchy here or there or something something uh from here i already know like say where you know where the knuckles will be or uh, how the the fingers are going to fold into a fist or something like that and you see what i'm saying so that yeah that's more the graphic approach to things if you will um it's things are again like i said that can be kind of sketchy but um only in a in a stylistic way that's not like this super crazy a wild looking scratchy living fine art piece like that that gestural drawing that i did i think you kind of get the idea of what i'm talking about here yeah so, yeah totally yeah so that versus this you know it's it's energized and i'm not i've, I've just begun this piece too so what i'm gonna do here is i'll get let's say let's say what can i okay let me 
my neighbor's blasting his uh, motorcycle there to impress everyone. Um, oh, that's really I don't know impressive. if you can hear that or not. But <laughs> no, I couldn't there. actually. Oh, it's funny. I'm like, oh, you're, you're so impressive. Anyway, whatever. So I'm starting to clean this up a bit where I want it to be cleaned up. And then I, you know, maybe I'll leave some aspects of it still sketchy. But then I'm going to go in with a darker line here and really pull out some some nice contour lines uh maybe i'll i'll how can i how do i want to shade her let's say if i let's say i've got the lights coming from one side and maybe uh there's a really strong drop shadow here that gives it more space um maybe it makes her a little more mysterious i might blur this in i might smudge this in and try to pull some of this out here maybe half of her face is completely dark that could maybe make it more mysterious and interesting i'm i'm trying to you know do something that is i'm trying to make something beautiful you know what i'm saying i'm, I'm trying to yeah do something that is fascinating and lovely and dreamlike and beautiful and you see what i'm saying so it's it's more like poetry than it is comic books that's that actually right there what i just said is really that says it all you know what i'm saying like is to try yeah that's, that's kind of what fine art is is it's you know dealing with more uh i i guess I don't know, deeper themes or more powerful themes and something, something. And I mean, I'm, I'm really just scratching this out quickly for this show. <laughs> you know, like if I were to actually be doing a piece, I'd be taking a lot more time and care and trying to, you know, make it, you, you get the idea, like not in a hurry, you know? <laughs> yeah yeah something you whip through or whatever, you know, but it, it's, it's just to kind of demonstrate a different thinking a different approach to you know to image making i guess is what i would say and so now this is just black and white what if i were to start using colors you know uh you know what would happen if i started putting um uh, some background contrast in certain areas here um how would that change the form you know to you know, have, have something more dark in the background what if for example let's say let's try this i'll show you another concept if i were to completely darken her in like so and really 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 you know lay on some heavy shadows and you know kind of fill her in like this per se but then draw with my eraser and selectively pull out lights you know uh, oh yeah that's a cool technique shadows. yeah that's called subtractive drawing and i'm not doing at all a good example of it like when you're really really you know when you're really taking a lot of time and you're really actually doing a piece of art then you know that can be fabulous that can just be super beautiful and it gives you a certain kind of uh what's the word Mm, allows you to to really focus and highlight certain areas to get a very strong sense of aesthetics you know in, in mm -hmm. a certain area that you want to like really emphasize in, in a figure or something so once again you know like contrasting that with this it's quite a different it's quite a different approach to drawing now in comic books you're gonna let's say with shadows for example you the shadows are they tend to be very hard you know they'll be kind of like like actually, yeah they don't do like core shadows as much do they there's there's not like lots of rendering and things it's just big black blotchy spots they're, they're spot blacks is what they generally call them so their whole area yeah you know where like like what i if you've ever seen hellboy comics that's like a good example yeah mike Mag magnolia yeah 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 which i i love and and like it, it's part of the what's cool about comics and stuff but at the same time it's it's still graphic it's part of that whole graphic quality of a thing you know um let's just put that right in there um maybe this this whole section here would be 
all filled in. So I really I think, like how you drew that line down his arm sleeve uh, like for that. where the yeah. yeah separating the light from the dark. So I I'm, that's I'm like doing this really makes it pop. Like, right, and and the, how did I do that? It's because I understand the form, and that yeah tells me exactly where that line has to go. If the light's hitting it at a certain angle, then that is exactly where the shadow is going to start. Same for here, you know, like his pectoral there. And and then, you know, same is going to continue down the side of those. You've got the knee popping out, you know, and then you can bang, you just fill all that in. And, and it creates a, a lot of drama. It's, it still has a nice... Yeah, that looks so cool. <laughs> <laughs> You know, a little little bit under there as well, and you you get the idea. Like that's that's comic book illustration, if you will. Um, it's just it's more graphic. That's all. I mean, it's not that fine art can't be graphic to some extent, but I just uh, maybe I'm biased. I don't know. This show is not meant to be like a, a ten hour course or a hundred hour course or something, but rather just a sort of a quick overview of looking at different ways to create images. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. um, no, I was gonna, I was curious whether you wanted me to try any of the contour drawing. So the blind contour, correct? Yeah, yeah. I've got um, like a box of markers. I've got like some headphones that I could try that are kind of within I reach. Use, you, use your hand, like put your hand to- Oh yeah, 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 the hand. And then once, as long as your 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 pad there is not going to shuffle around on the table, and it's yeah. stationary, so just go ahead and and like your think of it like you've seen those laser pointers, you know. Yeah. Imagine if you had a laser pointer and you're pointing directly on the contour edge of your hand, and then yeah. just slowly draw around. It's as if you know how when we were kids we would do thanksgiving turkeys and we would draw the contour of our hand like that right and then put a yeah. turkey out of it so you're just doing that with your eyeball though you're using your eye to do that while you're dude this is so hard exactly while your hand is actually following your eye and don't and like don't of course it's not going to be perfect of course it's not so don't like flip out about it oh, i'm never going to do this again that's not right that's the wrong understanding of what that means you know yeah dude it's so hard not to look at my hand too <laughs> <laughs> this it? is like re oh man dude, you, dude look at that it's okay. like my proportions are so jacked up okay okay so here's <clears> the point like you do enough of those blind contours and then you allow yourself to do the semi-blind so again the semi-blind being you know, you, you, you look back and forth and back and forth. So, and again, this technique is only for drawing things you see in life. It's not for drawing from your mind, right? You, that's silly. That wouldn't make any sense. You know, you no, we do use references, you know, whatever, and photographs and this and that, but um, there you go. Dude, it's really hard to run this box. Oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not so good. <laughs> uh, every, well, again, every single art student that ever existed had exactly had to go through this exact process. You know, if they wow uh, are doing the Western traditional Western art, you know, um, yeah. Any school that does not teach this is not worth going to. I would say avoid that. If it's all like you know, just splash paint like. The CIA told uh, uh, Jackson Pollock to do, or you know, all your feelings and you know all that garbage. Like, forget all that stuff. You got to actually have the skills. It's like anything, you know. You don't. I don't know. You, you just simply have to build skills up for whatever field you're in. You know. Oh, uh, dude, that's so weird. I just oh, tried no, to, you know, yeah. the picture on the back of your your book here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I oh, just yeah. <laughs> that was me trying to do nice. your face nice. there. <laughs> great, that's great. Yeah, do it, man. I mean, oh, that's, that's hard. Well, that's a complex <laughs> issue. That's I would use a photograph of some kind rather. And the the thing I want to suggest is that you also outline every shadow and every highlight, 
And if, like, for example, if you were to take, say, a black and white photo from, say, a fashion magazine of, like, a close-up of a movie star's face, and then mm -hmm. use an X-Acto knife to, to slice out every single shadow and every single light that's... So, like, if we look at my hand, the way the light is hitting it, you know, there's, let's say, you could say, okay, well, this area is, is a, a light area, so it's... Nah kind of draw that oh there's there's a highlight on my knuckle right here there's a highlight mm -hmm. on this part and and then the shadow okay well there's a shadow there's a shadow right in that curvy area i'm going to draw that and so you you outline every single thing you know and then all of it comes together like a puzzle to form a realistic image do you understand yeah 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 now is it possible to get accurate per or not accurate proportions while you're doing this kind of um, blind contour drawing? Your skill Does... for drawing proportions according to what you see will increase and be like the more you do it, the better you get. So the other method that kind of like this method I was talking about, sort of the robot method or whatever, the graphics method, that Mm -hmm. helps you mentally to understand well you know the this has to be bigger this has to be smaller this has to be higher or lower like the shoulder is not going to go in where your rib cage is it, it goes above it you know what i'm saying like simple things like that right yeah and, you know there's 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 grids and things you can use to understand uh you know like how a face works or you know where where all the pieces go um, and when your eye gets really, really good at that, you start to notice when you look at people, you'll see like, oh, wow, this person's earlobe is a little shorter on the left. Or <laughs> uh, like it, if you look at Ryan Gosling, his his uh, left eye is lower than his right eye. It's once oh, you see yeah. It, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And then you're like, wow, that's, that's kind of shocking. Uh, he knows how to tilt his head in such a way that you don't notice it so much, but it's like a deformity you know what i mean um yeah dude i have the same thing <laughs> uh, it's just part of life but i'm not seeing yeah yeah art. you're when you become an artist you see things i would say that like everyone looks but artists see think about mm. that everybody looks but only artists see like i don't know how to explain it but we we oh no it makes perfect sense like yeah you know, even when i'm driving the bus down the road um if I've been drawing already that day, I will yeah. start to like see all the basic shapes and everything that I pass on the road. Mm -hmm. It's it goes further than that in the sense of like I think you pick up on very subtle cues in people's uh, behaviors and their in their in their body language, their facial expressions. Um, mm. it, it's just an interesting side effect, I suppose, of uh, of drawing, but. Uh, yeah, it's marvelous. It's a wonderful world. You know, it really is. Hell yeah, man. Mm. Well, dang. Uh, well, I, what I do you want to do now? Yeah, I know. I think we'll probably wrap it up right about here. I think that it was a good, you know, general. I always shoot for about an hour. We're going on a little over uh, hour 20. And uh, right on, man. I wanted to get all that info out. I want to thank uh, my friends who joined us in the chat. Uh, my channel, The Great White Ape, uh, Yiz, uh, Wing It Productions. Uh, yeah, it's here. A lot of a lot of fine people there. So, um, also, if if you don't mind bringing that book back up on screen. Oh yeah, here we go. Do a quick yes. promo right there. Imperium uh, Calling. Yes, that's my book of art and poetry. It's on um, Amazon. Uh, if you go to my website, kent-art.weebly.com, you can get a direct link to that and have uh, you, my work. You can own my work in, in this book form. Uh, there's fine art. There's illustration work. There's a lot of comics in there, in fact, some of my poetry. Uh, it's just a really broad variety of different stuff. You've got to see some samples from the Bizarre Archives there. Um, just in a sense, a, a sampling of my art career within the dissident right. So, uh, and then there's also a foreword by uh, Spencer J. Quinn, who is one of the regular authors uh, and art, uh, 
I don't want to, what do you call it? Someone that does articles for a magazine with that, whoever that is, a journalist, not, not, not a journalist. Anyway, he's a regular writer for, for counter currents and a close friend. Um, so yeah, that, that's a, uh, I'm very proud of the book and I, I plan on putting another one out. Uh, the artwork that I do for, uh, with the patriotic art, um, uh, live show, I will be compiling that into a second edition of Imperium calling. And, uh, there you go. So thank you to everybody who joined us today. Please like subscribe, ask questions, get out there and live your life to the fullest. So God bless you. And thank you, Luke, for joining me today. Uh, thanks for having me, man. It's been very educational. Good stuff. All right. Again, anyone has questions, go ahead, put it uh, beneath the video and I'll, I'll get back to you. Have a great evening. Okay. Bye-bye.